Board of Appeals of Reading to order. We have a busy schedule tonight. We'll try to get through it as quickly as we can. Bear with us. Uh, we have a couple of issues to uh, cover, which should not take very long. So we'll try to get those out of the way up front and get to the specific cases later on. Uh, one of them has to do with a request for an extension uh, of a special permit that was granted back in December of last year for 87 Franklin Street. And you're here to represent. Josh will give you the floor and tell us what, what's going on and Great. what you want to do. Thank you, Chairman. I'm Lieutenant Josh. I'm Lieutenant. Sorry, I'm going back to my Navy. <laughs> Attorney Josh Latham here tonight on behalf of Eileen Gorham and John Bugden with regards to their property at 87 Franklin Street. Uh, this board had issued um, a special permit for an accessory apartment. It was a special permit because it was going to add to the gross foot footprint of this property. Um, the permit was issued and approved December 5th, filed with the clerk December 17th. Appeal period expired on January 7th of this year. It was recorded January 14th of this year. Since that time, they have interviewed contractors. It's a sizable job. Um, in April, they selected a contractor. That contractor backed out a month and a half later due to family reasons. They then interviewed new contractors, selected a new one in June. In July, that one backed out. They have now left us at this point where any contractor they've spoken with says they simply can't start this job until after the new year. They're simply booked up into the winter. Because this special permit bylaw imposes a one-year time frame, which is unlike any other special permit that we have in town, we are now faced with this looming deadline of if we can't subsume it by early January, it is null and void by its term. Well, fortunately, the statute, 48 Section 9, specifically says that we can, this board can say that this is still valid if for good cause it's been delayed in, in its use. But what I would like to argue tonight is that there is certainly good cause as to why my clients can't use this special permit within this time frame. They have tried very hard. They have their architect lined up. Their engineer has just finished everything. They're ready to go. They just, due to market conditions, can't get it started. Um, so what we would request tonight is simply that the board find this reasonable to grant a short extension on the special permit for six months beyond the January deadline, just so they can source a contractor, go ahead and pull the permits and get this started. So on that basis, that's our request this evening. So you're requesting an extension of six months. I don't, didn't read that anywhere in the letter. You know, it's really this, it's the board's discretion. Actually, case law says that technically you don't even have to affirmatively request it. It's more that if a building permit's later denied, we have to come back and improve it. So we're actually trying to be proactive. Okay. So six months we just think is a reasonable time. Mm -hmm. But really, whatever the board finds is reasonable, you know, we would, we would appreciate it. the judgment that. of your client and you, do you consider six months based on what's going on, what's happened, a reasonable? Period. We do. We do. We believe within this time frame between now and January, we can source a contractor knowing they can now start in the spring. None of them could start before January, and that's been our difficulty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jack. Mark, do you have any comment before we go around the table? I do not. Okay. Val, I'll start with you. Any comment on this? <clears throat> I think it's reasonable. I know what the market is in terms of the difficulty, besides the personal issues that the contractors face, but I know that it's getting harder and harder. I would actually just waver to say a year instead of six months just to be on the safe side. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with uh, Kyle pretty much. Uh, you know, tough, tough case in this particular case where we have interviewed two contractors and uh, both have said they uh, would rather not do the job and tough anybody else they've interviewed said they can't get to it till the end of the year or until the new year let's say uh, I do like the six month request and uh, that would put it to when Josh to the that would take us to about June 17th June, of June 14th June 17th of 2000. June 17th, okay. And to me, that seems like it would be adequate. Uh, I mean, they, they can get all their ducks in a row over the winter, get everything lined up, and uh, be ready to uh, dig into the ground instead of hit the ground. Dig into the ground uh, come uh, construction season 2020. 
Uh, that seems reasonable to me. And once they get that first shovel in the ground, that's it. It's it. Yeah. Okay. Derek. Uh, six months seems reasonable. I mean, you, don't, you just have to start it. You don't have to finish it. So June sounds good to me. John. I probably would side with uh, Kyle on this one. Um, the year to me would be a little bit safer than the six months, knowing that you have to do more than just one shovel in the ground. And we're talking about probably three months of spring that you're not going to be able to do a heck of a lot. Um, I think the bylaw only gives us an extension of one time on special permits. Correct me if I'm I'm wrong, um, Mark. Really? <laughs> I didn't see anything in the bylaw. Yeah, but I, I wasn't specifically looking in there for in regards to an extension. Of yeah, I don't, I don't see anything in the bylaw that says that. No, I don't think it's in the bylaw. Yeah, I think it's in 40A. Yeah, national law, yeah. So if, if I can clarify, so essentially for a good cause extension, it becomes a case of, um, the case law is very clear. You don't actually have to come in and, and say, I need this. It's more that if we applied in February and hadn't come in and seen you, Mark would have rightly been able to say, hey, I think you're beyond this, and now you got to go see them. So we were simply coming in on a yeah. long time. I think it's a rolling right on a good cause basis, but if we had some other basis to request an extension, I think that's where we might be limited to a one-time request. Okay. I'll go with that. I know we've been in that position before, so mm -hmm. I just don't want to stumble into it all over again. Yeah. I, from my perspective, I don't have any heartburn with going with six months. Frankly, I don't have any heartburn with going with 12 months. Um, <coughs> would you, how about you two? Do you have any problem with a 12 month if we decide to just do that and move on? I no. No. I, you know, the more I think about it, it's, you know, if it's there, they, they can't do it till the fall. I suppose they might need it, but okay. I certainly would hope as, as a homeowner that they would want to do this as uh, quickly as possible certainly. and uh, hopefully plan on uh, having their shovel in the ground kind of uh, April. <coughs> okay. And I would think one shovel, change, that's yes. all it takes, John. <laughs> <laughs> does does it even have to be a backhoe? <laughs> right, just a shovel. That's yeah. it. But knowing the... the the possibilities of uh, economic change uh, that's brewing too, uh, uh -huh. it would behoove you to get that shovel in the ground. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. True. So um, I, you know, I don't have a problem with uh, six months. I just think the year is safer. But if the six months is what you requested, I don't have a problem. With it. Certainly, for us, a year would be ideal. I just wanted to make sure the board knew that whatever they wanted us to come back in six months if we needed more time obviously it's more efficient to request one year at one shot and then I'll never have to see you sometime. Josh we don't want to see you back <laughs> <laughs> I won't take it personally I don't want to see you. I'll entertain a motion to uh, to uh, grant an extension for, for 12 months anybody want to uh, sure grant the motion for 12 months so that would take us not to June 17th, but to... That would take us to January, January 17th of 2021. Okay. So I would say 12 months to January 17th of 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. we we'll get a motion. No. Is there any a second? John just John? did. John okay, just did. all in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you very okay. much for your time tonight. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. All right. We probably should write a short write-up on that. Uh, yep. okay. okay, the next one, next short one we have, uh, and this came up, uh, and it wasn't on our agenda, but it came up after the agenda was put out. It has to do with 104 Salem Street, and I'll read the letter uh, from Brian McGrail, attorney Brian McGrail from Wakefield. It says, on behalf of my client, HB Development Corporation, I respectfully request that you continue this case until your second meeting in September of 2019. We are in the process of meeting with the building commissioner and the administrative staff in an effort to resolve this matter in an agreeable and acceptable fashion for all parties. Furthermore, if the continuance is granted, 
on behalf of my client, HB Development Corporation, the time for the Board of Appeals to render and or file a decision with the town clerk is extended to October 10, 2019. Respectfully, Brian McGrail. So we have a request to, we already continued it once, so this is a request to continue it a second time to our second meeting in September. Okay. Okay. This was not on the agenda for tonight, though. This was not on the agenda for tonight. This came in after the agenda was put out. No, no, if it came in after the agenda was put out, but because they're requesting a continuance, it's okay to not be on the agenda. That so we can just entertain the continuance. We'll see. Uh, they were supposed to be in when? Today. Today? Yes. So the request for continuance came in today? I believe it came in this week or late last week something well this is dated august <laughs> this is dated august 19th which happened to be monday okay. this letter okay well by the time they got anything okay okay yeah, it, it the, just seems the, a little odd that typically we've been you know we we continue these the date that they were scheduled for the hearing that would have suggested it should have been on this no that would yes uh, uh huh been on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So, it says you've been involved in some discussions yeah. on this case. Mark. I'm just, uh, huh? I, I don't know if you're asking me or telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 not this, I'm reading the letter, I'm telling you. <laughs> no, we, we, you know, just for the board's information, yeah. um, after the last hearing, we did have a meeting. Um, Julie, uh, myself, and the applicants in regards to modifying their request um, where if it got approved through us, then they wouldn't need their um, the variance they were seeking. So that meeting didn't go as good as the applicants had planned. So they have to go back to the drawing board and meet us again if they want to continue that way. So that's that's why they're asking for the continuance, because they had to make some changes in order to satisfy what we were looking for. When did that meeting take place? He's asking for October. No, the meeting the meeting we had? Yeah. The first week of August. Yeah, it was probably two weeks ago yeah. yesterday. The only problem I have is I don't, just don't understand why it wasn't on the agenda. And I would agree that it should be on the agenda. Um, and uh, But attorney Brian McGrail also noted that because of the continuance request, it's okay that they're not on the agenda. If they were before the board tonight and wanted to make a case, it would be an issue. But because it's just a continuance request, he said it's okay. Well, I normally... If that would be the situation, he would have appeared tonight. He would have asked for continuance, told us why he wanted the continuance to move on. This way he doesn't have to come in and do that. Right. However, it, it does not straighten out the fact that it was scheduled for this evening. It should have been on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So we need to watch that carefully. Well, okay, this is where I'm getting lost here a bit. Uh, have we heard this case before? And we continued it yes. until tonight? And it was never put on to the agenda. Not on this agenda for whatever reason. No one caught it. Yeah. It's something that should not happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Can yeah. we overcome that? And, yeah. And grant the continuance tonight. I I don't have a I don't have a problem with that. How about no. anybody else? Okay. No. So we'll so move it to the October deadline that the petitioner's attorney is requesting. He's requesting it be moved to the second meeting in September. And so then the October date is for the extension of time for you to file your decision. It gives right. you your normal right. slotted amount of time to yes, file. Express an extension to uh, whatever the second October 4th, I think. Uh, 14th? No. Second meeting, second second meeting in September would be the... So the second meeting in 18th. September is the 18th, 18th. and then okay. to file the decision by October 18th. 4th, I believe. So I'll entertain a motion to extend or continue with this case uh, for 104 uh, Salem Street, case number 19-14 to September 18th. Moved. John, move. A second. Here. All in favor? 
Second. Five zero zero. Okay. Okay. I assume you'll let them. Somebody will let them know. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Now we can move on to the Second. meat of the evening. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have three cases, and we'll take them in order. The first one tonight will be uh, dealing with 11 Woodland Street. Are the petitioners here? Yes. Okay. Uh, unless there's an objection, uh, I'll read the legal notice first. The Zoning Board of Appeals would, will hold a public hearing in the Selectman, Select Board meeting room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, on Wednesday, August 24th at 7 p.m. on the application of Craig and Kerry Catalfamo. Catalfamo. I tried. Hey, everybody says it that way. <laughs> Pursuant to uh, Mass General Law Chapter 40A, uh, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw Sections 7.0 and 7.3.2, to demolish the existing single story garage slash breezeway and to construct a new addition that extends an existing non conforming side yard setback on the dwelling on the property located at 11 Woodland Street in Reading. I'll, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that they've been notified, as were the following, the select board, police department, building department, health department, engineering division, town clerk, fire department, conservation commission, assessor's office, CPDC, and all the members and associate members of this board as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Glenfield, Stoneham, and Wellington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you wish, I think you'll speak on this case this evening. I appreciate it if you would stand up. And that applies to everybody. If you think you might want to talk about it, stand up. Okay. Raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I, the answer is I do. I do. I do. Okay. Who is going to speak on this case this evening? I will speak. I am Nancy, right, Nancy Toomey. You got Thank you. I'm Nancy Toomey. I'm the architect for the Catalfamos. And um, they have a house that was built uh, around 1951. And one of the things about 1950s houses is it's very rare that the foundations under the garages are adequate for any kind of a second story. So this project began with trying to add a master bedroom and bath above the garage. And with inadequate foundations, it was determined that that had to, had to be demolished. So we took the opportunity of uh, make, making sure that we stayed within the uh, 9.7 what existing setback from the side property line and added um, a again a single story garage a second floor over it for the master bedroom um, with a side entrance and uh, then behind it single story extending it for a family room uh, with a full basement below so we're asking uh, that you grant a special permit to allow them to maintain that 9.7 foot distance from the property line uh, and to reconstruct uh, the addition as described. Um, any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, uh, we got uh, the rejection note from the building commissioner which basically says that based on what you want to do, you require a permit from this board. Um, are there any other comments, Mark, that you want to put into the conversation at this point? No, not at this time. Okay. I'll start with John this time. John, commentary on this uh, on this case? Well, uh, I guess um, the first question is, um, I think I know the answer, but the first question is, what is the... Uh, completed structure in terms of lot you have a very small lot to begin with the lot size so as completed um, you would come up with a percentage yes so the existing lot coverage is 15 percent and the um let's see i'm yeah existing lot coverage is 15 percent hold on 
And did he put the lot coverage on here? He did not. He did not. Let me do some quick calculations. That's a good question. So, if I might, for clarification, I did all the math already. The uh, so based on the existing lot, the 25% would equal 1,920 square feet. If we add the existing structure, the shed, the proposed addition, the proposed deck, it comes to 1848, which ends up being 24.1%. Mm -hmm. I came up with 24.6%. Well, we'll go with yours. <laughs> but that's, that's fine. All, all that's we close. have to do is to please you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I came up with 24% myself. I did it, yeah. Um, did he do it? Well, we'll <laughs> 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 okay. All right. um, I have to, um, he always can be said well prepared, and I don't didn't think that you overlooked the... Uh, <laughs> the lot coverage. Lot coverage. <laughs> um, that's quite, a, quite an addition that you're putting on. Um, <laughs> So other than that, I, I you know, you, you stayed within the, the 9.7 feet. Um, so the setback requirements uh, meets the requirement that, that uh, is, is part of the special permit. So that's the only question I had. I just didn't know if I was missing along the line. Or I will something. make sure they update the site plan to include the actual. That's it, John? That's it from you. Eric? Um, that looks like you have a legal non-conforming structure lot. Uh, you're in the S15 district. You have an existing 9.7 side yard setback slash encroachment. You're not uh, making it any worse. What you're proposing, I think, is in line with the neighborhood. So, not many issues. Uh, I would agree with John, with Eric. I had the same qu uh, questions as John did. Basically, I agree with Eric. It's everything else is legal, non-conforming, it appears. And uh, I don't believe this addition uh, at all as, as being constructed into the neighborhood and what's already there. I, I would say this meets the criteria of uh, the uh, bylaw 7.3.2. And Kyle. Uh, I agree with the rest of the board. I need to keep it short so we can move on. That has a closure. Well, as a matter of fact, I agree with them too. Excellent. <laughs> I think it uh, doesn't require any further discussion. I'll entertain a motion. Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. I have to open it up for public I'll opinion. Put, yes. All right. Does anyone in the audience wish to speak on this case tonight? No one stood be, to be sworn in. Yeah. That's why I'm saying that. I know. So I. If they've stood up, they'd have well, to be sworn in at this time. So obviously no one does, so I'll close the public portion of the thing. Any further comments from the board? Then I'll entertain a motion. I'll, since we started with you, I'll come to you and go around. How about okay. doing it? Sounds good. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion then that... Uh, okay. That, uh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. So. Uh, make a motion that uh, the board uh, grant a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 7.3.2 uh, in order to demolish an existing uh, single story garage breezeway and to construct an addition that extends an existing non conforming side yarding but does not increase that side yard setback at all or does not decrease that side yard setback than what already exists at uh, the uh, address 11 Woodland Street, uh, all in conformance or in general conformance with the uh, surveyor's uh, plot plan uh, dated June 27th, 2019, prepared by Benchmark Survey, stamped by Andrew Bramhill, uh, on uh, July 15th, 2019. Uh, again, uh, the applicant, I'll just make note, noted that they would take that plot plan and, and add on the calculated uh, lot coverage if they would uh, on that. Also in general conformance with the architectural plans 
submitted by uh, Tommy Design, uh, sheets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 of 10, uh, dated uh, July 16th, 2019, uh, with the uh, conditions that the petitioner submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plan prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. And the petitioner shall then submit to the building inspector final construction plans for the proposed structure or addition, along with as built foundation plan for that addition prior to the issuance of a building permit. And then that the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector as built plans of the new structure as built prior to the issuance to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Do I have a second? Second. Eric, second it. All uh, in favor? Five zero zero. It's approved. If you'll stand by, I'll sign the documents for you. Sounds perfect. Thank you. Anybody go grab it? I have, I, I, what I believe is the original plan. Is it you want that? I've made comments in pencil, mm -hmm. and then I've raced up and put it back in the yeah. yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Zero. There's this one too. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> there you go. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's see if we got one in here somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> If you would put this into the folder. Huh? If you would put the copy that I had in the folder. That copy? This is an original. Okay. I'll that, stamp. That's a heck of a copy machine. I'll stamp that one. It even makes it look like an original, but it <laughs> wasn't original. You got the uh, drawings well, drawing to go with it, too? What? You got the other drawings to go with it? Yeah. Okay. And I'll sign those. case before us this evening is 231 Ash Street. Are the folks here on that one? Okay. Uh, again, I'll read the legal notice. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Select Board's meeting room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, <coughs> Massachusetts. On Wednesday, Wednesday, August 21st at 7 p.m. on the application of George Wilson, pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, or, uh, Section 10, for a variance 
under Reading Zoning Bylaw Sections 55163, comma 63 and 74 to construct a new garage with a non-conforming side yard setback on the property located at 231 Ash Street in Reading. Again, uh, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list as other than to say they've been notified. As well as all the departments I mentioned before, the select board, the police department, building department, health department, engineering division, town clerk, uh, fire department, conservation commission, assessor's office, CPDC, and the members and associate members of this board. As well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Again, testimony given before this door. Board is under oath, so if you wish to speak on this this evening, would you please stand? And do any harm, you can all stand if you wish. Anybody else who wishes to speak, it doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt to do that either. So, Okay. Please raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The answer is I do. Thank you very much. Uh, who is going to speak on behalf of you folks this evening? I think we all might speak, but I'm George Wilson. Good evening, board and Mark. Okay. And I'm with Bay State Structures, and we're proposing to build a garage in this one that street. The, the area next to the house where we're proposing to build a garage is where the driveway is, and the area is somewhat limited. And so originally we were going to build a 24 by 24 garage, and we reduced that to 24 foot on the width because of the closeness to the office. And so what we proposed is a 20-foot long drive to the pole cart. And was, there's going to be a little over five foot. On, I think you got this plot plan. It's, I think, 5.1 in the plot plan. On this on the setback on the side to the, to the neighboring property and five feet from the house, which isn't uh, ideal. I, ideally, you, you want to get from the, from the structure and as the limitation of the space there, we could get the ten feet. So we've got five and five on both sides. That's where it's still. Any other comment? Uh, well, I could say more. I don't want to bore you. Um, Well, it, it would depend on, and yeah, I'm open to any questions and, and see what you have. It, uh, I brought with them, from, well, I didn't bring with them, they're here. These are the proper property owners, Arvin and his wife, mm -hmm. uh, Andrew, and, uh, and so they, they might have something to say as well, because they have them involved in the project. Okay. Thank you. Now, I'll go back over to this side again. Uh, start with you, Kyle. All right. <clears throat> First of all, probably I ought to read into the record here uh, that the building inspector rejected this. Uh, and I think I'm going to just read through the, not the whole thing, but just pick out the parts I think that were the reason for rejection uh, uh, or question. Uh, and uh, the issue of. Uh, you know, any detached garage in a residential area or accessory to in a single or two-family dwelling in a non-residence uh, may be located within the required yard setback or required rear setback, but shall be no less than five feet uh, from the nearest side or rear line and occupy no more than 25% of the required side yard and or, or required rear yard. But it also went on to talk about another paragraph, which well, you, you referenced, which was uh, the height being no more than nine feet, no dormers or windows, and should not have a full staircase. So, therefore, you're not in conformance with all of that, and that's the reason you're here. I would merely point out that getting a variance is probably one of the most difficult things to get from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, so we'll go at it. I'll start with Kyle. Uh, any, anything else you might want to add, Mark? No, I'm just open for questions as okay. we go. All right. Kyle? Um, there's a couple points that were raised in your petition, uh, one of which was 
regarding water runoff onto the property as part of a hardship. Um, could you elaborate a little bit further on that? So actually there was a new construction was done in our backyard. Uh, it used to be a empty space, but they built the four houses. And I saw that. Our house was flooded twice, uh, even though we had a permit or drainage system inside the basement. And to overcome the, pro the issue, we actually hired a contractor and they put uh, drywall and uh, what's called uh, level the lot, you know, this is what it flow. And since then, the, our, on, you know, flooding issue went away. And uh, in order for us to put the garage in the back, pushing back at the end of the driveway, that's the hardship for us because you, the garage will go on top of that drywall and we don't want to do that because it will cause us to find a flooding problem again. So that's why we're trying to, we would like to have the garage. We've been living in a town for many years and we have a driveway, 18 foot wide and, you know, we find some destruction at the end of the driveway. And I mean, if it's possible, you will not get it done. <laughs> you know, I understand. You know, you never have any issue. <clears throat> it, it does sound like there's a number of things that you're looking for for the variance, not only the setback, but as was noted about the windows, the dormers, and the stairwell uh, that's accessing the top floor. You also note that there are previous examples. Uh, in the past where a condition similar to this. Do you have any further information on those exact properties? Because as much as those might have been cited here, but I had permission in the past from either the zoning board or otherwise, uh, they might have been in a unique condition that's separate from what you're asking for, though you cite those. It's again, part of the idea of the guidelines that are set for the zoning is so that the town and the people living within that do conform and it's as respectful to the neighbors as much as to an individual owner and their property. It does feel to me that there are a number of exceptions that you're looking for and when the design is proposed. Uh, do I hear or convince otherwise, I would have to side with the zoning bylaws and guidelines that stipulate that this is asking too much. Could I say something in sure. that regard, Kyle? Uh, in section 5.5.1.1, I think you might have it there. What it says is any accessory building or structure, including a garage that is less than 10 feet from a principal structure on the lot, shall be considered attached to the principal structure and shall be subject to the dimensional limits and requirements applicable to the principal structure. So, therefore, it's going to take on the requirements of a principal structure, which Dormers are allowed, stairwells are allowed, and so that that so in my thinking, applying the bylaws, those instead took on the additional burden of, of the principal structure setback, which is the primary uh, purpose of the variance that that I felt that we were seeking to, because of the hardship that we're seeking to extend the variance. Uh, extend that setback, the side setback beyond the, uh, currently we're proposing five feet, which is what a standard garage setback would be, but because it's taking on the requirements of the principal structure, that five foot's being extended, and that's what we were seeking a variance on, the, the not having to comply, to be able to comply just with the garage on that, the, as far as the setback, the five foot setback, but as far as the stairwell and the dormers, I didn't see them as being applicable, but if if they if they are an issue, if that's the the, the impediment, then I think that Arpin would be willing to let those go. If that that's what the objection is. <coughs> I think for now it's my my initial comments. Okay, and hear out the rest of the board and those issues. Okay. Uh, looking at this. Uh, it certainly appears that they, they do need a variance for what they're requesting here in that the uh, proposed garage is uh, 
what, uh, 5.1 feet mm -hmm. from the property line. Mm -hmm. And they don't give a dimension on the plan in regards to how close the garage will be to the house. It's but it five. certainly appears to be about four to five feet. I think the total length, Arvin, and I mentioned is 30 feet from the house right. on the property side. And the, the width of the garage is 20 feet. So, so. so there's no argument that, number one, you do have a detached garage. I think that's obvious. Though what the bylaw says in regards to that is uh, any accessory building this structure, including a garage that is less than 10 feet from a principal house, shall be considered attached to that principal structure and shall be sub subject to the dimensional limits and requirements applicable to a principal structure. That's what it says, dimensional and that. Doesn't, and then specifically it goes on to say, any detached garage shall not have your dormers, et cetera, et cetera, on that. And this is a detached garage uh, on this. Uh, so it should have a 15 foot side yard setback. You need a variance because it's only got five feet on that. Yes. So that, I assume that's you yes. know, pretty much why you're here. Yes. Looking at your arguments for a variance, you have to meet all four criteria of the uh, uh, variance arguments uh, to the board. You have to sway the board that uh, you know we agree with, with your arguments there. Uh, I don't see any issues with topographical features, lot, ish, lot size, or anything like that at all. Granted, it's, you know, you put in a uh, drainage system in the back, and if you put your garage there, you obviously may disrupt that. That's got nothing to do with topographical features. That's a man-made uh, issue that you yourself created there. So you, you, to me, you can't use that as an argument for topographical features or uh, lot unique situation or something to that effect for criteria one. Well, can, can I see something? Uh, Go ahead. Okay, uh, item number two. Uh, it talks about that uh, you are getting on in age, you would like, you would want a garage for the cars. Uh, I don't see the hardship. Just wanting something does not create a unique situation or, or that. If, if you needed it for medical purposes, say, or something to that effect, that may be something that would sway the board. But just saying, well, geez, I, I would like a new garage there, so I want a variance. I don't think that is a too good of an argument. And on... Uh, Number three and four, you make note that uh, other garages have been built in the area uh, with uh, apparently no problems, etc. That may be so, and they may be similar to, to your garage, but each case is unique. And we don't look at other cases to decide your case. We are looking at this one case, and I could not see, you know, and then number three, that we wouldn't be setting a... Uh, you, you would be a detriment to the zoning bylaws when they specifically state that you need to be 15 feet from the property line uh, or you need a variance. And, and I don't see the argument for a variance there. And if we allowed it, to me, it would be certainly detrimental to what the bylaws intended uh, on that. And I think that's pretty much the same argument for number four uh, on that. So I. Right, right now, I, I am not convinced at all in regards to granting a variance on this case. Thank you, Bob. Eric. Mark, could I ask you a question? Sure. Are we, are we, and I guess I'm just asking you because you've got the denial here. So I know for purposes of like the side yard dimensional controls, it's considered attached, but we're also applying the criteria for the detached with the dormers, windows, stairs is correct. Well. Okay, perfect. So we need a variance for all of those items, not just the dimensional. Uh, Two variances. That's right. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so I, I kind of feel the same way as Bob because I'm looking at your plan here, and I think 
I guess would it be fair to say the reason that you don't want to put it farther back um, towards the uh, the rear of the house and maybe move it over a little bit so you could you know basically do what you want to do within the the building envelope that you have is because you have um, some drywalls there. The reason they were necessitated was a developer put a short street up behind his house. Mm -hmm. It's 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 quite a bit higher. So this is Benjamin Lane. Has three houses. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yep. It has it has just three houses on it. Mm -hmm. And when he did that, that caused the water to come down. So when Robert had said that it was was his own choice, this this just happened. He didn't elect to have the water come down like that. So he went to the engineering department here in town and the engineering department came up with a plan to set up his backyard with these dry wells to alleviate the problem that was created with the development, the, the houses right behind it. And so they they designed that and then a contractor installed it. And so to, dis to go against it by pushing the, house, the garage to the backyard, which I guess is what the only other option is that I'm thinking, well, if you have other ideas, I'd be interested, but if we push it to the back, it would go on top of what the engineering department designed, and it, it would uh, probably make it non-functioning or probably bring the water back to the house or, or at least uh, go contrary to the design of the plans, how, how severely it would impinge on the effectiveness of the drainage system. I don't know. Sure. So the, the reason I asked is <coughs> you're probably getting the sense that to get a variance, unlike you know the other people that were here before with a special permit, is a lot more challenging. So for the variance, you need to have all four um, of the criteria that you know you mapped out with your uh, variance criteria question answered. So all four of those need to get checked off. So even assuming in my mind, that you know, you could make the argument that the topography, uh, the pre-existing topography with the slope, um, and then the developer who you didn't have any connection with, you know, causing the drainage issue, um, existed. The second one is where I'm really tripping over, which is describe how the literal enforcement of the provisions uh, relating to the circumstances affecting the land or structure in question would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise. Um, I guess we don't we don't know what those would be. I mean, obviously, you'd prefer not to have to you know redo the uh, the drainage system, but if they designed one with the existing conditions, I mean, I suppose it would be you know potentially uh, possible for them to design a revised one, and then it would just be you know how expensive was that going to be? Um, but like I said, I, I think for me. Without knowing that, I, I couldn't make the leap to say that it was a financial, or it was a you know, substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, because we, we don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's substantial or not. So, you know, without kind of reaching, you know, the rest of them, that's where I see the issue. Um, that's where I'm at. So. Thank you, Eric. John. A couple of quick questions. Um, are you the original owner? Yes. You bought the property in 1965? No, 92. I, 92. 1992 is when we moved. It's the second owner. Second owner, okay. Um, the property was purchased in a trust. Are you the beneficiary of that trust? No, he was by, bought individually within the trust. He sent it to and the reason I'm asking that is that when that development was put in the in back of you, um, it had to come before uh, CPDC for a subdivision. And during that subdivision, it appears, as you said, that there's a level of, of difference between that street and the houses that are built and your property, which is a little lower than that. Um, it appears um, from looking at it today that in that, that was done, again, appearance-wise, to save a major tree that was on the original property when it was sold. I kind of remember a little bit about that when Ben Nichols um, yeah. passed away. 
Yes. So that area was full of trees. Yes. Right. Conservation. So my my point would be that I think that's why the town stepped in and tried to help you out somewhat. But that assistance and um, helpful correction on the property for both you and two other neighbors uh, which have a similar situation. Um, you're not the only one so that in the first criteria it is not unique to your property uh, because there are other properties that share the same appear to <coughs> share the same difficulty or problem in the elevate and that's the elevation. So I'm having trouble with uh, definitely um, the first two criteria of the variance. But what I would ask you is, um, you would like a two-car garage. Can you survive with a one-car garage? Um, and the reason I ask this is because you could come back in to the building inspector, come in with uh, a new proposal and maybe get at least half of what you were looking for and not have to come before this board for relief from a variance, which the chairman has already made mention is a very, very difficult. Maybe in other communities, not so difficult. In this community, very difficult. So my question to you would be, have you thought about this? Because you're going to be asked pretty soon how you want this board to move. And you have three options. Option to one is to go ahead, listen to the board, gets, get its decision. And if it's a negative decision, you can't come back for two years. So do you really want to go that route? <coughs> or um, you could ask for a withdrawal, which means kind of wipe this out. Uh, come up with a new set of plans, come in to the building inspector or the building commissioner, talk about this, see what can be done, and maybe come back with something for yourself uh, that's not going to impact the drainage that you have in the back, won't disturb that, and maybe we'll get a portion of, the, of what you're looking for down the road. And I just throw that out there. Um, to you as, as we talk, because the, the board is, is, got, is got to resolve this particular case before it. It can't just leave it hanging. You can ask for continuance also to do that, but the continuance I don't think is going to get you anything. So those are the three options that you could be looking at. But I'm just throwing that out to you right now. There's just one member of the board. have to answer. I'm just throwing that out. You can consider it. We still have one member of the board who wishes, um, I mean, we, we go around this beam, go around the loop here, and each of the board members will will give you their two cents, so to speak. Thank you. So that's it for me. Uh, my turn to talk. I, uh, I'm in complete agreement with much of what has been said. Uh, I don't think the case has been made to justify a variance for the specific plan that's before us tonight. And John has very clearly stated out that there are options. I agree with him that the option to uh, continue it doesn't leave you much room to come up with something better. Uh, so it, it would seem to me that, and I get that you get the sense that the board is is negative on the plan before it tonight. So I think what you're facing is potentially let us vote on it, and if it is disapproved, then you're you're got to wait two years to come up with an alternative situation, or you could withdraw without prejudice, take a look at what you might do differently. And one suggestion was made uh, as to what could possibly be done. So I think it's in your hands right at the moment as to what you want to leave this building with doing tonight. Could I ask? So John made this suggested alternative of reducing the size of the garage. I'm wondering what other alternatives would work in and um, 
you had also mentioned, could, could we, you, you would possibly alluding to, to approaching the engineering department and asking them what would be the feasibility of building the, the two-car garage in the back and, and would they redesign the, the drainage? Is that what? Well, I don't think that's I, 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 I didn't even want to touch that because that's that, not, I think that you have, have already um, got some help from the town to uh, eradicate a portion of what, ha what, it, what you're facing up there right now. And their design would have cost you substantial monies. Um, and your contractor put it in. I don't know what the background on that is. But the point is, I'm just saying that right now from what the board is, well, I think you've heard from the board, um, what you're asking for for two-car garage right now is just not going to fly because of the inability to meet the four criteria. And it's not meet one, not meet two, not meet three. Meet all four or zero. So that's what the variance is. Whereas in a special permit, you're able to make conditions, you're able to adjust in there without the specifics uh, repercussions of what the variance is. Because a variance doesn't change. If a variance is made, it goes for forever and for all until the land disappeared, which is not good because that means none of us are going to be around. <laughs> so where a special permit could be conditioned on time. So this is the, the situation I think that you're facing. We can't go any further than what is in front of us tonight. Period. We can't. We can't suggest. We can't look for alternatives for you. We can't do anything. And maybe I misspoke by saying one alternative would be to reduce it from a two-car to a one-car because you would be able to fit that in and not meet the standards um, of the bylaws, I think, if you work that, uh, if somebody works it out with the building commissioner. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just throwing it out there. It's worth a try. Do you, do you think that was feasible, Mark, that you would read? You would still require... If, if you shrunk the size of the garage and you met the side setback, which would be 15 feet, then and no. then you're within 10 feet of the house, but you meet the 15 feet, and then if you're out of the 5 foot buffer, so to speak, you don't have to meet the criteria of the plate height, the dormers, and the staircase. So basically, it would if you met the side setback, the other stuff goes away. You can do that because you're not in that five foot setback. And it would be by right. It would be a permit by right. You wouldn't be in front of the board again. Well, the space right now we measured from the principal structure to the property boundary is 30 feet. So if we set it back 15 feet, that leaves just 15 from the 30. That's you, enough. You're saying that it would still require 15 feet from yes. the. Yes. Well, that would leave just 15 feet. And then the space from the house to the to the garage was going to have to be subtracted as well. Well, like a suggestion I also made earlier with you, you could attach it to the house itself. If well, you would if you attach the garage to the house, the criteria for the dormers, that stuff goes away because now it's not a detached structure. You still need the variance for the side setback. I we had talked about I suggested that to Arvin and and what I didn't realize, it, it, the interior design of the house is such that where that door would come from the garage into the house, it wouldn't be on either level. And uh, so it would get to be, it's a split level house, and, and so it was going to be a little bit complex. But it would just be to attach it, not to have it be connected interior wise. Yeah, that's what we were thinking possibly. Okay. And, and if you met the 15 foot setback, you can adjust the height of the garage to meet the house. You don't, you're not limited by the garage height anymore. I see, yeah. I think there are things that I think you can do to get to where you want to achieve the, the end result, okay? And, and I think maybe a little more thought into what would enable you to get there and probably get there by right, as Mark says. So I think, you're, I think you need to think about it a little bit more because uh, what we're facing and, uh, and deciding upon tonight is something that is unacceptable. So I think you're going back to what your options are. I think you're kind of looking at potentially two withdrawing without prejudice. Okay. Or 
board, the letting the board us vote. Is not, the board is not recommending that you do this. We don't recommend it is, anything. Is, is, it's your option. So, what the, what the and, and I don't think the board is telling you that you're going to be shut down. It says if we proceed on a vote, we have to vote, and if the vote turns negative, you're stuck for two years. But if you withdraw, it just takes an eraser, wipes that out, and you start, start from over. scratch again. Yeah. And this might help you out with what you're trying to achieve. So the board is not trying to tell you to do anything. It's all within your purview and your decision. I agree. I mean, <coughs> we just withdraw the current request, but we are putting it for everything. So you're saying you, you want we to withdraw, withdraw without prejudice? Right. From the application that's before us. Another plan and work on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, I think I would entertain a motion. I guess Do we, we need, need to. Open the public or not? Do we need well, that's true. Uh, Nobody stood. No, but well, I will. No, open but you have to go through the process. I will open it up to public uh, uh, opinion. Is anyone here wishing to talk on this case? All right, and I'll close the public portion of this meeting, and now I'll move to a motion. And I guess I'll keep going around. I'll leave it start. Oh, sure. At you, Eric. Uh, I move that the board approve the petitioner's request to withdraw their motion without prejudice. Second. Okay. No, Bob, I second it. Bob seconds it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? It's five zero zero. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we can do it. Thank you. 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 Who said excuse me? I did. Oh, okay. I didn't make him for sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. The next case this evening is 28 Berkeley Street. And I assume you're the ones that are here to talk about that one. Okay. I will uh, say, before we get started on that, I, yes. I would just like to say, right. I, I don't know the applicant. It's down as the applicant, I believe, is their contractor is the applicant but I, I do know the owners you know uh, somewhat they, they're neighbors they're not with I'm not a director butter they're not a butter to me or anything like that but I, I just wanted to point that out and if anybody had any issues I would be glad to step aside but seeing how we do have only five members tonight only four would be voting then but uh, if you don't have any issues I'll be glad to sit here and I don't have any issues personally. I the think point, I, can, yeah. I can be fair. And <laughs> the point this, is yeah. that, that with five members, we need four out of five to vote yeah. in the affirmative if that's the way it would happen. Okay. If yeah. he's not here, then you have to have everybody voting in the affirmative. Yeah. So right. it's to your advantage to have him here, yes, but I guess it's up to Bob and you folks as to whether you have a problem with that. If you have a problem, I don't have a problem. Okay, fine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, I'll go back to case uh, number 19-18. I'll read the legal notice. Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Select Board's meeting room at a Town Hall at 16 Long Street in Reading uh, on Wednesday, August 21st at 7 p.m. on the application of Walt Davis. Uh, pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 7.3. To construct an addition to an existing single family dwelling that exists on an existing non conforming side yard setback on the property located at 28 Berkeley Street in Reading. Again, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list. I will say they were notified as well as all the people I've mentioned before. Uh, 
Board of Select Board, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, and members and associate members of this board, as well as the planning boards of Wayfield, Linfield, North Reading, Stone, and Woburn, and Wellington. Testimony again is given under oath, so if you all are, would like to speak tonight, I would request you all stand. Anybody are? Testimony, raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given before me uh, before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. The answer is I do. Thank you. Uh, are you going to speak on behalf of your application? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Your floor is yours. My name is Walt Davis, uh, Advantage Visual Design and Construction. These are my customers, the Eaglestons. What we're proposing to do is build an addition on the rear of their house. Um, but unfortunately, it's a non-conforming lot. The current setback on the on their house is six foot three. So our addition is going to stay within that on the rear of the house. So. Okay. Any other comments? Um. It's just a very, you know, it's a, it's a tight lot, but it is, uh, it represents the neighborhood pretty good. There's a lot of, you know, non-conforming lots on the road, mm -hmm. smaller lots. So are you here tonight because the building inspector, you can't do it by right. It has to get an approval from this special permit from this board. So that's what you're here for this evening. Uh, is there any added comments you want to make, Mark, at this point on this case? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. And I'll go back over to this side again, and I'll start with John. Um, is, is there a... Uh, um, Is it per se a front porch on the property now? Yeah, it's kind of a very narrow farmer's porch. Yeah. There is, and that's consistent with the deck that's uh, or the stoop that comes down off of the uh, left-hand side of the property. Is your face it? Yes, it's all one. Uh, so that's where the uh, setback of the 18 feet is coming from. Um, the farmer's porch and the in the wraparound. Yeah, so the front setback is is this thing. It's it's uh, original to the house. Okay, we we basically have a, a non-conforming structure on a non-conforming lot. It doesn't meet the side setback, the front setback, or the side setbacks, but it does meet the rear setback. Yes. Um, and you are looking to move to the rear with your addition. Yes. Um, At, at this point, I don't really, I mean, the criteria, the, the criteria I think that, that um, is in section 7.3 is, is very specific but very open. And I think because of the setback that you're putting on the um, northerly side of the house, moving from uh, 6.3, uh, four feet to six point, I guess it's um, existing as 6.3 feet, you're moving it back three inches so it comes out to be 6.6. .6. So you're making an, uh, an approach to, to lessen the encroachment that's on there at the present time. Um, you are moving that back 26 feet. Um, but it is a special front because it is a non-conforming structure. And it's on a non-conforming lot. So I don't see any major difficulties. This is consistent with what we have done over the past approximately a year or so with these type of um, situations. So I really don't have any con uh, problems with it. Thank you. Right. I don't have any issues with it at all. Well, it didn't take very long. No, John said it all. Uh, 
I, I think John hit it. Uh, yeah, we have in this particular case a, uh, a legal non-conforming lot, legal non-conforming structure. But in regards to the addition, uh, there's no new conformity, new non-conformity proposed at all. Right. Uh, lot coverage noted on the plot plan by uh, John Sullivan uh, is at 22 percent under the 25 percent criteria. And with the addition, certainly in the back of the structure, I had noted in my notes that, that uh, I don't see that there'll be uh, any substantial detriment to the neighborhood at all uh, with this addition. Well, the only, the only individual that may have a concern is the one on the opposite side to the right, or is it to the left, to the right. Of where you are, and it doesn't appear that the uh, the neighbor who is the closest um, is going to have a problem with it, and he's he or she is not here, so yeah. I don't perceive that there's any problem with that. Again, we're we're talking to a an open a closed house, open house, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay, yes. Kyle. Um, <clears throat> no, I don't have any. Um, further comments to add, but for one, maybe just for the fun of the point of the setback being a little bit further away, I appreciate because aesthetically you're being considerate of the massing, not being just a straight wall, Yes, um, that it, it benefits by being just a few more inches away. I think that this is also accidental, but in terms of a design that is fitting within a neighborhood, even that minor bit of a setback off of the massing gives you that aesthetic, which is far more pleasing than if it was just a flat massing right across from the existing to the new. Appreciate that. Um, I think that you're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I kind of see it the same way. You're fundamentally not creating a new nonconformity. You're basically going from an existing setback of 6.3 to 6.4. 6.6 at the start of the property because it slopes back to the back. Your property is not aligned with the, the yard, the, the yard line, close. so you're losing an inch. Uh, so I don't have any problem with it either. I think it's quite straightforward. Uh, again, I'll open it up to public input. Does anyone here like to speak on that subject? It's your time, no? No? No, thank you. Okay, then I'll close the public portion. <laughs> Any further comments from the board? And John, I'm all the way over to you for this one. Well, you know, Cy, that I haven't written a decision. <laughs> I know, and I, it's taken me great pleasure to do this, okay? I will find a way to get out of it. <laughs> um... <laughs> The motion would be to um, grant a special permit um, under under uh, section 7.3 of the Reading Zoning Bylaws uh, to construct an addition to the existing single-family dwelling uh, that extends an existing non-conforming side yard setback on the property located at 28 Berkeley Street. Uh, in Reading, Mass, uh, consistent with the certified plot plan issued by John D. Sullivan, um, date of issue 6 13 19, um, and with the set of architectural drawings. Pages one through eight. Um, issued by Advanced Visual Design and Construction, uh, dated uh, 4 10 19. Um, with the three usual conditions, which I don't have in front of me. Uh, you got them? I do. Oh. Uh, 
that the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Uh, the petitioner number two, the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with as built foundation plans prior to issuance of a final uh, occupancy permit. And three, the, uh, the petitioner shall submit as built plans to the building inspector showing the completed construction immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of the occupancy permit. Um, I don't think there are any other conditions uh, other than the books in the right hope so. Do I have a second? Second. Kyle? Uh, all in favor? It's 5 zero, zero. It's passed. If you'll stand for a moment, I'll get you a stamped copy of the drawings. Outside of foundations, mm -hmm. so we're not required in the town of Reading to abide by that. Right. I guess we don't need you anymore, Mark. If you want to, it's not the work. first time I've heard that. <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. I'm just thinking of you. That's all. <laughs> uh, okay, a couple of items before we get to the minutes. Uh, uh, Bob sent around a decision last week, and. and Andrew brought to my attention that we should be very careful when we're transmitting minutes around. Uh, so you can okay. decisions. Yeah. Tell us what it So you can decision. send decisions while CCing each other. That's it. You cannot comment on the decision. You cannot make edits to the decision through email because that violates open meeting law. So you can send documents, but stops there. You cannot have any conversation on it, you cannot have any edits on it, such as like that. And that's all I was trying to get at. I think you guys have been doing it for a while and there's never been an issue, so you can continue as is if that's the case. But just want to be sure we don't violate that in any way. I just want everybody to be aware of yeah, it's good. You can send yeah. comments directly to me, of course. Um, and 
I can e I can like relay them to the board, but you cannot discuss among each other. So um, why don't we just leave it this way? Do I just send them right up to me? And uh, if there's any issue, that you will see there. them anyway yep, because they come. They're going to come to you and right. go down there and sign them anyway. So yep. let's just leave it at that. You got a problem, with John? A comment? Um, Yes, yes, yes and no. Um, we have been doing it this way for a very long time. We have never, never, ever had a complaint or have gotten into trouble mm -hmm. with uh, litigation. Right. Um, the comments that have been sent back bet between board members have always been um, for accuracy during, and we don't have we don't have a clerk that can go through and validate what we are sending mm -hmm. to the town, mm -hmm. meaning you in this right. case, um, to verify what, what we have in there. So we wait for the minutes to come out. By that time, the decision is already cast. Right. So we've had a couple of issues in the past, <coughs> I'm going to say two to three weeks, actually since we lost a person. Mm -hmm. um, and the screening hasn't been the same. So there's minuscule things that happen mm -hmm. that could invalidate a decision. So I don't see anything wrong with what we're doing if we want to send it out to everybody and we and any of you see something, make the reply back to you right. and, and not to the person writing it. That's that's what I would say. That mm -hmm. that's okay. Still. Let's leave it at that. Mm -hmm. But Andrew, I guess, mm -hmm. Andrew is willing yes. to take on the yeah. Adam, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't happen very often. In fact, I can't remember too many instances. Now, now one, we're, we're I've, I've seen I've seen two or three in the last two months. One is date, one is address, a no, wrong number. Check. You're right. I mean, very minor but things, so. but they have been there, and um, the fact that we corrected them, we caught them. Mm -hmm. um, some of you, some of the two of them you caught, mm -hmm. and one we caught. Right. But I mean, the, the fact is that you don't want to invalidate a decision. Right. So right. you want to get it right before it actually gets published and goes Correct. to the town. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. So, it, it, I, those, those me, fall in the category of corrections and not discussing anything. Or, right. Altering. I, I think so. I think there's to that tradition, there's an advantage to making sure that for the record it's correct. And that also means that we don't have to come here and review the minutes and correct them afterwards or for your own staff afterwards. So. Well, you still have to approve the minutes. Sorry, I meant in terms of any other corrections that might come up, yes. But, but the, other, the, the other issue is that, um, I hate to say this, when I go back in time, there was, there was the first paragraph, which is standards, which is basically what has been advertised. The second paragraph is what the request is is offered and what the board took. And the third paragraph was the final decision. There was nothing in between. Way back when, there was one or two or three paragraphs why the board made a particular decision. Right now, the only way we can document any of that, and if it goes to litigation, is to ask for the minutes to be heard um, so that we can correct it, meaning before it gets done. Um, and that's what was, that's why all of this went forward. Years ago, we shortened up things because it just took so much time. Mm -hmm. right. And we were the we only requested. board. We were the only board writing our own decisions. Right. I've asked for this to be changed, I'm going to say easily 10 years. And We'd never have any money or whatever, but we're going to get into a litigation problem somewhere along the line if we don't get this corrected. Well, I, I, I think at this particular stage of the board, having Andrew here is a, is a yes. way to do this yeah. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if Andrew was, Andrew, Andrew was, we weren't always, yeah, yeah. I know we that. didn't always have somebody from daytime government sitting with us. Right. Okay, <laughs> tell us what your, what, yeah. where, what your position is. Are you going to be here every week that we are? 
the I'm answer is trying to be, but <laughs> the answer right now is no. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I mean, we don't have. There's only two boards that are quasi legal. One is us, and the other one is CPDC. CBDC, you do everything, mm -hmm. so that is done. For us, we do it all, and if it goes to litigation, we get the ones, we get the challenge all the time. We get the... <laughs> you, get, you get the appeals, you get the... And we go to court, and we get, um, what do you call it, de deposed, <laughs> and all the rest of it. I mean, I've been through that twice with this board, deposed. I just don't want to go through it again. That's why. I'm but anyways. Yes. So we are working with Amanda, who is new to zoning, and she's done an excellent job so far. But we have requested just make sure you double check everything, addresses, dates. It seems minuscule, like you said, but it does have a bigger impact and takes time to fix and litigation and so. We're just working through that process, catching up to speed, and she's doing very good and acting quickly, which is very good to see how much she's learned in the short period of time. But as you see, there are a few hiccups along the way, and we'll work to correct them when they come, but the goal is to not have them. <laughs> so. Well, we're glad to have you in the process going forward. Of course. <laughs> and as long as, as, long as um, we're going to have Amanda to to take the minutes, um, which previously we were not guaranteed. And when the other individual unfortunately left, who was did exceptional work, but she was highly overqualified, and that's the reason why she kept it the way it is. And with Andrew coming on board uh, and doing some of this, he does his own stuff, he catches it. Um, we are a little bit say substantially more validated by this arrangement but that arrangement's got to be down in black and white otherwise it's another another reason why you know we want to make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and over the years I learned that that's extremely important one of the other things to interject into this is my understanding that Amanda will not sit in on these meetings. And take my she will put the minutes together based on looking at the video. video. Mm -hmm. Is that and correct? And we got our first two sets of minutes, I think, mm -hmm. doing it that way. And I, we haven't looked at the minutes, so I don't mm -hmm. know how good that is. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. But that's, she's not going to be here to record minutes in real time. See, I hadn't got that last, that was before I left. <laughs> so, uh, I, it doesn't make any difference. The point is that there's got to be some... As long as it's accurate. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see how it works. Mm -hmm. Right. Discussion closed, I guess, on that one. The other thing I want to bring up is I think you all got to notice that yes. there is a select board meeting next Tuesday night at <coughs> 10 p.m., to discuss a litigation, and I understand that litigation is the 40B we just approved. Right. Uh, East Eaton and Lakeview. Lakeview, okay. Uh, it's past my bedtime, but I will plan to be there. Is anyone else? I have to plan to be here. Are you going to plan to be there? Anybody else? Uh, I okay. didn't plan to be. Okay. Well, well, I mean, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I'll probably get shot for saying this um, or reprimanded in some way but um, there's nothing that can be done at this point unless the board opens up the hearing again yeah. because it's told to either by mass housing or because of other um, litigation difficulties or problems that arise that town council tells us to do it so I, I don't think that anything is going to be resolved, to tell you the truth. I would agree with that. Yeah. But, I mean... But I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Okay. And, uh, okay. Glad you would be there. Yeah, so I'll, two of us will be there. That's it. Okay. I'll get my beauty sleep the next night. <laughs> okay. It's not work. <laughs>
won't have any issues. Well, I may sleep at the meeting, but that's all right. No one <laughs> did post an agenda. In and case I, there and I, a yes, and actually, there's only if only two of us are going to be there, it's it's not it's not considered a meeting. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Got it wrong. All right, we've got what we've got left is a couple of sets of minutes. So, and the first time I've seen them is when I came here tonight. No, so I haven't seen read them. No one's read them, I think. So let's. Could let's I make one other correction? Uh, Andrew handed us on one four nine four. Um, that was um, the. Uh, oh, it is in here. Okay. Um, no, it's not. We only have one case for 94, right? And a few continuances, including 55 Walker's Brook sign. And Walker's Brook is on there for continuance. Mm -hmm. So they're working with Mark and myself to find further history of the building. And we have pulled together some documents, none of which I know if will help them or not in their case. but. They're working to get as much info as possible for the board and before they come. And I wish I would have had it for the packet, but it's tough to find some of these files from okay. back in the day. Well, the point would be that it's, it's still going to get advertised as a continuation mm. on the it's agenda. On the agenda, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And if you want an explanation of what's happening with 26 Green, I can. I was going to wait till the 4th, but just so you know, they have sent a letter in to withdraw the request for the conversion of the garage due to some of the issues the board had with it, but they would like to continue with the special permit to enclose the porch, but because of that, they're asking for a continuance to the September 18th meeting in order to redesign their plans around the porch. Um, but we'll do all those motions and such on the 4th, so. Okay, so we'll have a series of continuances. Right. Plus. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, okay, let's take a look at uh, the minutes for June 5th. We'll start with that one. Okay. <coughs> Text. This must have been Kristen's last set of minutes, huh? I believe she worked on half of them and then Amanda finished the rest. Um, but John's name at the top is missing an A in it. So that. Yeah, John's name is not spelled right yet. But we'll get to those out there everybody else has. We'll do them all when we get through it, I guess. Let's just all go through it, and then we'll pick up all of your comments. So is the chair now making all the um, motions? Um, I had noticed that as well, that you had 
written that you had made all of those motions and I didn't uh, right I have to go back and check that I right. think I think we, we need to get that corrected mm. yeah I would yeah. agree because all, it's all seconded by Nick too yes <laughs> so um, I I really think we'd that get that corrected yeah I agree who did second it? I was not here at the meeting, so. Right. 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 Yeah, there's a lot. Of, you guys said a lot of minutes. Well, I think uh, Sam Street. Um, that's correct. Uh, motion made by Eric and second by Sai. You're talking at 619 now? Yeah. 19 11. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the next one, 19-12, uh, that's correct. So how much grammar do we want to correct here? <laughs> I think there's a lot. Copying that to the commas and... No, we just run on sentence? Sure. Whatever you got, I will. Yeah. Like, one of my bugaboos is always the past tense. And, and we'll, tense hold, we'll, we'll hold a public Mary. We held the public Mary. Yeah, he said that classified before. versus classifies. Yeah. But I, I have to, the one on the whole signage for Walker's Book Drive. I'm finding a shortage of information that was discussed being represented here. Mm -hmm. Such as, you know, Mr. Duple commented that there are certain criteria that would need to be met in order to do this, this being the idea of putting the sign on the roof. Mm -hmm. And we also then spoke what those criteria would be. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't those be read into the records as information for whoever's reading this? Um, typically, you see minutes it written this way is need to state the exact criteria can in this case because I think it's important when you when you look at the tape and you're and you're trying to put it into a minute you take the um, specifics uh, and put them in um, the actual one on sentences doesn't bother me but the the ideas must be in there and which is what the point here. exactly and um, Walker's book, certainly, I, you know, I, I looked at that and I said, said, you know, we spent some time on that. There was a lot of issues there, none of which are in there. Yeah. But that would have an important impact on the continuance of Walker's book down the road. Yeah. So you might want to go back and look at some of that stuff. Or you didn't write these minutes from the tapes, so where Amanda, Amanda wrote them, we take it. I think that's fair to add, otherwise it would potentially lead to us repeating ourselves and not being able to cite the examples and we go through a run-on gotcha. the, the substance of the, of the discussion on the board needs to be in there. Not necessarily in our words by a particular member sure. of the board, unless it's a, in a motion format or whatever. So, to that degree. In terms of the amount of information that is not here, while I know one is the importance of noting the signage on the roof as opposed to on the side of the building was cited as an option for them to carry forth on, 
and look into and come back potentially and propose that might be what we're seeing come September 4th. The other information that was discussed was issues and concerns by the client, the owner, uh, of the tree siting issues and the need for it to be up that high and that large and other things along those lines. Would that also, I would think, be information that should have been presented and therefore recorded? There's additional information that I, I find well, missing. What I'm suggesting is go back and look at the, go back and look at the substance of the, of the, of the tape, and get that in in there, mm -hmm. because that's that's the important aspects of what Proper this is all, all about. So even to that degree is what I'm referring to. Even that information that was about the trees and the sight lines and stuff, that also hits the level of importance to be documented. Yep. Yeah. I think along those lines, there's several things that need to be revisited for that section of the notes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who said what is to me is not as important as the substance? <laughs> Correct, yeah. Right. So, do we want to hold off on taking well, action on these just minutes say, until we go we through that? Yeah. So, I don't think we should vote on these minutes tonight. I would hold off until you have, not have a chance yeah, to vote. Yeah, if I have to add. Quite a bit, then you well, should look at it. Should, should we at least see if there's any other pertinent review and co give commentary now? If not vote on it, but at least finish our commentary? Yes, if you have more comments, please. Uh, we'll I think we need to get rid of all. John did an awful lot of motions. I know. Uh, oh, I will be double checking that. Of seconding, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> the minutes will, t the, the video will tell you who did what. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, we may be faced with the same thing with June 19th. I don't know. Well, this seems to be. <laughs> Let's take a look through that one. If we could hold off on any of the minutes that we have in front of us tonight. I think 619 back. should be okay. If you review them, I watched the tape and wrote these ones, so I hope I got enough <laughs> substance for We're you guys. We're going to apart. I would say on the Walnut Street one as well, even though know that I don't think this is going to come back to haunt anybody, it, it, again, the structure of it is. Mr. Jeremia asked Mr. Dupal to explain his letter of denial. Mr. Jeremia asked the board if they had any questions. Mr. Toronto stated, but there's no follow-up in the information that's being noted here. There's, you asked a question, right, but there's no, there's no follow-up. That's, that's so what the I'm June saying. I'd rather just hold off on all the minutes, go back and review them, get them right the first time through. And then right. For June and June. You, can, you could abbreviate some of some of right. who said what when mm -hmm. but the substance needs to be in there so your comment you're including 619 the six five six nineteen I think should be okay I hope but you guys tell me so you did six nineteen So no uh, comments in these that uh, held a public hearing.
How's everybody doing? Still reading 619. Mm -hmm. Still didn't find anything yet, but I'm still reading the minutes for 619. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I like the, the 619 much better. Yeah, it because is. Because they have the consistency yeah. of what was yeah. part of the of the meeting. Yeah. I just yeah. agree with Bob though. We should still say we'll hold. It, we held it. Yes, yep. I will change that. We should change I agree with that. Yeah. The only thing that, that I found, and somebody, if they went back to read the minutes, and even I find it now, it opens up the meeting by Mr. Dreamer, and then he addressed the correction of Scrivener's error for 168 Walnut Street. Mm -hmm. It's not even on the agenda for that. No explanation what the error was or any, should we at least refer to the minutes where that was discussed? Or should I at least put the, the case, case number in? Should you embellish what the error was or the discussion was or something? Well, the same thing is true when you, you ask for a continuance. On what basis are you continuing it? Uh, every time we continue something, you need to put in why we continued it. Well, we, and it's, it's, I think generally we do. At right. the request of the applicant, uh, something to that effect. But well, this yeah, it has to be more than just at the request of the applicant. Scrivener's in... I agree, I should put the, a case I, I don't understand it. what the Scrivener's error is. I don't know what it is either. That was the one relating to is the wrong address in the decision and so I can certainly put the case number and at least say the ad the decision was corrected to reflect the correct address. Okay. Okay. Well, and, and then we, error doesn't have to be capitalized, right? Would that be um I I took it as being Scrivener's error quotes <laughs> around it like it's right. a <laughs> Big issue or something. Yeah, That's right. what it's known okay. as. The script is ever. Okay, you're going to fix that. All right. Any other stuff in there? Okay. No. So you know what you got to do? <laughs> I, do. <laughs> huh? I do. Good boy. Okay. <laughs> Does he have all the information, guys, that he needs to take so those minutes? What are we voted on? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. We, we why don't you, modify, why don't you modify the minutes and put them on the agenda for the next time? We'll bless it at that time. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, th I think okay. that's what we should we'll, do. We'll, we'll, we'll revise these as, at the next as meeting we for these discussed two tonight. Sets, yeah. 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 And then Fair enough? Next. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, let's see. Just so everybody understands, Kyle, you're going to write up that uh, that one. Yep. Uh, uh, continuance for you, Yeah, I can. I'd love to see John writing yeah, that one since I've been on this board. <laughs> I was thinking that tonight. I haven't. John has. I haven't. Well, you haven't yeah. been one yet, Eric. See, my memory's not very good. So. <laughs> I apologize. I thought I was the only one getting away with it because I was still an apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> so a whole okay. bunch of new different. <laughs> kid has a nanny. Yeah. Well, well, I figured we had around. I thought that, uh, you know, my past is that the chair is responsible for making sure that all the information gets to the board uh, for the hearings that night. Um, not all the time did we get all the information. So as chair, I spent all the time going around doing that. Correct. Yeah. And even when I wasn't chair, I kind of fell into that again by coming and asking for information to become forward again. And I think that's the chair's responsibility because the chair name is on each of the applications as they get published. The chair, because the information is incomplete or whatever. Well, we thank you for all that work. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that when the chair steps in, chair's responsibility is to go forward and make sure that everything is right. Versus writing up the <laughs> papers Versus afterwards. That, yeah, I agree. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about tonight before I ask for an adjournment? I don't think so. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second by Kyle. All in favor? Thank you.